heard him say very clearly, loudly, that this is your heart. Also, he said, this is your week. He said, this is your day. And this is your hour. This is your hour of lifting. No man, no organization, no devil can stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before the end of today, which is 12 midnight, that long awaited testimony will reach your hand. No one in this church shall be called sick. From today, you shall begin to prosper in the dimension of this commission. Joy unspeakable, full of glory, shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. God's word is coming this morning. The Bible said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And the word became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Father, send my own word this morning that will bring healing. Send my word this morning that will bring direction. Send my word this morning that will strengthen me. Lord, my own word is in this service. Let that word come. Let it give me understanding. Let it heal me. Let it deliver me. Let it settle me. Lord Almighty, I place a demand on your word this morning. Holy Spirit, give me understanding. Give me understanding that I may live. Spirit of the living God, dwell in our midst. Manifest yourself like never before. Father, we give you glory. Jehovah, we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Tell your neighbor, I shall not die. But I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. You believe it, say it to somebody else around you. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of of the Lord. Put those wonderful hands together for Jesus and please be comfortably seated in his presence. I have dominion. I welcome you especially this morning to this covenant family day. And by the presence of the almighty Somebody will be living here this morning transformed in the name of Jesus. The prophetic theme for this month remains Jesus Christ, the healer, is here. Can somebody echo that? And the teaching series remains, Is there no balm in Gilead? Part 2. Is there no balm in Gilead? I'd like us to understand very clearly this morning that God has already programmed every one of us here to live in sound health. When he created man, he didn't see any problem attached to him. That's why in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31, the Bible said, when God created man, he now released him and he saw that it was very good. Everything that God created was very good. In other words, there was no provision for healing because man was not designed to be sick in the first place. There was no provision for healing. When he created the whole world, he saw that everything was very good, including you and I. And that is why when man fell in the garden, Sickness came in, affliction came in, stagnation came in, death came in. And that is why God now had to bring the second Adam in the person of Jesus Christ to restore man to his original place. And before then, many other things have been taking place. Just to see that man returns back to the Garden of Eden. The word of God, as we have been told, is the balm in Gilead. The word of God. Because wherever the word of God is, that is where God goes. 
Where the word of God is, there is power. Where the word of God is, there is liberty. That's why in the book of Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, reading verse 20 to 22. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. God speaking, say, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep my word in the midst of thy heart. For they are what? Life. Unto those that find them and held to all their flesh. Attend to my words. The word of God carries the very life of God. The word of God carries the majesty of God. That is why if you look at the entire scripture, God never manifests without his word. And that is why there must be a priest that must speak his word. Each time the word of God is spoken, we have committed him to confirm what has been spoken. So for any affliction anybody is going through, all we need most importantly is the word. Tell your neighbor the word. I didn't hear you. Keep my word. Attend to my word. You are challenging your health. My word is there. You are challenged financially. My word is there to see you through. You have issues concerning your marriage. My word is there. The word of God is the all-purposeful drug for every affliction in life. When you introduce his word in any situation, solution has come. Attend to my words. Attend to my words. Attend to my words. God will never do anything outside the world. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot of my word will go unfulfilled. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. The words that I speak, they are spirits. They carry life in them. And that is why when somebody is sick and he receives the word and he believes the word and he speaks the word, he has no choice than to be healed. This morning, every sickness, every disease that came here with you, they are not returning home with you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he's saying, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? I mean, in every hospital, you have a doctor and you have the drugs. The same way, in his house, in Zion, you have the palm, which represents the word, and you have his servant. Is there no palm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 20. Why then is the health of my daughter not recovered? But there is a palm in Gilead this morning. And by this word, everyone that came here afflicted, tormented, frustrated, you are going home like Britain in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I'd like us to understand this morning that our sound health has been paid for. Our right to sound health has been paid for. So you don't need to pay a second price. Any good you see in any supermarket, any departmental store has a price tag attached to it. And the moment you pay the price, you are license to carry the goods. The same way Jesus Christ has paid the price for your sound health. You are not permitted to pay a second price. Is somebody hearing me this morning? The price for your total health has been fully paid for. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 Paul speaking 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are what? God's. You have been bought. Jesus Christ paid 
the supreme price for your sound health. So you and I, we are not permitted to be sick. You and I, we are not permitted to be stagnated. We are not permitted to be frustrated. We are not permitted to be molested by the forces of darkness. The price has already been paid. And that's why in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, the second part of it, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, By his stripes ye were healed. Is that in your Bible? It didn't say you are going to be healed. By his stripes ye were. It's past tense. It's already a done deal. And so by reason of this understanding, you are not permitted to be buried. Is someone hearing me this morning? You are not permitted to be molested by the devil because the price has been paid. Every sickness and disease that came here with you this morning by the word of God that is going for this morning, I command an end to them in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> by this understanding, you and I have been repositioned by redemption far above principalities and powers. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, we are made to understand. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, he said he has raised us up together. He has done what? I didn't hear you at all. He has raised us up together and made us see together where? Not in Weinberg, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where you are seated this morning. He has raised us up together. In other words, when he died and rose up, the same way we also rise above every situation and circumstances. He has raised us up together in Christ Jesus. And Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 20, 21. Ephesians 1, 20 to 21. He has raised us up. He said, he wrote this in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. That is, in heavenly places. Where? Far. Say far. Far, far above what? Principality, power, and mind, and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. He has raised us up together. In other words, where Christ is now is where you are. Is somebody hearing me? Where he is is where you are also at the right hand of God. Far above. Hear me this morning. You are above cancer. You are above HIV. You are above barrenness. You are above death. Far above all principality. He didn't say some. All. So by reason of this understanding, every demonic forces, you have command over them. You can't be molested. Why? God is with you. And the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Far above. All principality. So we need to have this understanding that we are not to be manipulated. We are not to be controlled by the forces in this world. We are above them. And he said, we are above every other name. No matter everything in life has a name. But the name that is with you is higher than those names. Just the same way the rod of Moses swallowed the rod of Pharaoh. In the same way, by reason of you having this name, you have the authority to molest and to subdue every force of darkness. Whether barrenness, whether poverty, whether sickness, any name, you have that power. Tell yourself, I have that power. From today, that power will begin to work in you. Far above, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Colossians 1 13, Paul speaking also. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. He said, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has translated. I'd like you to understand that word. Translated. In other words, you will have bypassed every other issues of life into where he is. And he said, As my father has sent me, 
so sent I you. From today, nothing will molest you. From today, no attack of the enemy will prevail in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why one of the mysteries he gave to us before he left was the mystery of the flesh and the blood. Each time we partake of the flesh and the blood, we are partaking of the very life of Jesus Christ. So that whatever is in him will also be manifesting in us. Now, if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, he was never sick. At no time did they rush him to the hospital. At no time was he ever stranded. When he needed money, he was not stranded. He didn't go to the bank. He sent them to go to the sea and bring forth a fish and open the mouth and money was there. When he needed the car, he didn't buy one. He gave a commandment. Go to that street called Weinberg. There is a homer jeep parked there. Bring it. If anybody asks you, tell them the master, the original owner, has a need for it. When it was time for him to have the last supper, he commanded them to go to the upper room. There is a hotel, five-star hotel position there. It has been prepared. Tell them the master is coming. He was above situation and circumstances, sir. When they rushed to him that Lazarus was dead, the Bible said he stayed extra four days. Why? He said, I have the power of key and of death and the enemy cannot use it against me. And so when they got there, they said, Lazarus, comfort. He didn't touch him. He used the word. My son, attend to my words. The word of God is the palm in Gilead. This morning, every situation and circumstances that is challenging your authority, we bow to the word of God in the name of Jesus. So, what is in this communion that heals? What is in the blood of Jesus Christ that heals? Number one, we share the same blood group with Jesus Christ through the mystery of this communion, which makes every one of us sickness free. We share in the same blood. Why the same blood? We are made to understand in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He that sanctifies and the people that are sanctified are all one. So, you are the same with Christ. And the Bible speaking in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Leviticus 17 verse 11. We are made to understand that for the life of the flesh is in the blood. That's why if any man has any medical challenge, if they can't assess him, the moment they take his blood and carry out that test, everything can be traced in the blood. Every sickness and disease can be traced in the blood. So the life of every man is in the blood. That is why when we partake of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are partaking of the very essence of Christ. Remember, we are told in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? God was with him. So if he was going about doing good the same way you have the same blood flowing in you. That means you have been programmed to do good wherever you go. Not only that, you have also been programmed to heal everyone that comes in contact with you. Now if you are healing people it automatically means that you cannot be sick yourself. Is somebody hearing me now? And that's why he said in Mark chapter 16 verse 17 Mark 16 17 he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. So that name is anointed. In my name, you shall what? Cast out devils. You shall take up serpents and speak with new tongues. And if you drink any deadly poison, it shall be turned to vitamin A to Z in your body. <laughs> you are too immune to be a victim of sickness and disease. So the very life of Jesus is in the blood. John chapter 6 verse 57. John 6, 57. Jesus Christ himself speaking. He said, as the living father has sent me and I live by the father, so he that eateth me, he's talking about the flesh now, even he shall live by me. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So the blood in the communion rescues us from the power of darkness. Warring against our well-being. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him. How? By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. Praise the Lord. In one of our services, one of those days, a woman came to our church who is not a member of our church. But she was invited that day by the daughter-in-law. She believes in another church, you know, and then she came worshiping in our church, and it was a communion service like this. She partook of the communion, and she said, this waist pain that has been afflicting her for over 12 years, immediately she partook of the communion, it dissolved. Now, she didn't know until she got back home. She suddenly discovered that that pain was no longer there, and then she remembered that it was when she partook of the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power in this thing we are taking this morning. There's power in his flesh and his blood. That's why when he was going, he gave it to them as one of the mysteries that sustained him. That my very flesh and blood, I'm giving it to you through this mystery. And as you partake of it like this, you can never be sick. Praise the name of the Lord. We are having testimony. The man, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, was taking the flesh and the blood every day. And he was never sick. Every day. Kenneth Hagin was taking it every day before he died. And he was not sick. The same way as we are partaking of it this morning. Every sickness, every disease, every affliction of the devil that came here with you, you are not returning back home with them. Amen. What is in the flesh of Jesus Christ? What is in the flesh of Jesus Christ? The bread in the communion is a symbol of the rod of God that swallows up all the rods of the magicians in our body. The bread in the communion is the symbol of the rod of God that swallows up all the rods of the magicians in our body. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 2, Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 2, the scripture declares, they say, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. That's talking about Jesus, Christ, And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Remember, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Power. There is liberty. In Isaiah 59 verse 19, he said, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them. So that rod is coming forth out of Jesus Christ. And it shall carry the spirit of the Lord. And hear me this morning. There is no way God's spirit can be in you and the spirit of sickness and affliction is in you at the same time. It's not possible. One has to step out for the other. And you understand that power is in levels. There is no way the spirit and the power of God can be in you and the affliction of the enemy remains in you at the same time. No, it's not possible, sir. When the evil spirit, when the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, we were told that the evil spirit came upon him. There can be no vacuum. You have to determine which spirit you carry. And the moment you carry his spirit, automatically sickness must disappear. Praise the name of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28. We are made to understand there that as they were eating, Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. So when you are taking the flesh, you are taking the body of Jesus Christ. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, Say, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. For as long as you partake of it, you do it in remembrance of pain. So whenever we are partaking of the flesh, and the blood of Jesus Christ. We are partaking of his very life. And when his life is in us, automatically whatever he never carried is not permitted to be in us. So that bread neutralizes every poison, every affliction, every sickness and disease in our body. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I'd like us to know this morning that something new is coming upon every one of us here today. And hear me, after this coming up, no one here will be called sick. No one here will be afflicted by the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 3, the scripture declares there very clearly, it says, Arise, shine, for the light is come. Tell yourself, my light has come. I didn't hear you at all. If your light has come, it will be louder than that. When we say my light has come, it means my world has come. The word for your healing has come. How your light shines is a function of how you rise. When we are talking about rising there, we are talking about understanding. Let your understanding be in place this morning that you cannot be sick. I said last Sunday, sickness comes in form of symptoms. So you determine whether it stays or not. I mean, it's like somebody knocking on your door. Are you available? And then you open and say, I'm available. That's how it comes. And it comes via your thinking. For as a man thinketh in his heart, some comes through the word of their mouth. Oh, my sickness has come again. And so the thing enters into you. You can't be thinking sickness and expect to be healthy. No. It's not possible. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Philemon 14. For without your mind will I do nothing. So you must not allow sickness to penetrate your spirit being. As it is knocking on your door, you rebuke it how? By the word. My son, attend to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. As you are going up and down, doing your business and all of that, and there are issues coming around you, let the word be in your heart to rebuke that attack. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all they are flesh. People of God, every sickness and disease in the world we automatically bow to the word of God. It is our understanding that makes it work. There is no sickness, there is no disease that we know bow to the word of God. Can I take him was being ravaged by that attack of the devil at a very tender age. Every notable man of God prayed for him. He wasn't healed. Until he saw from the scripture one day, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. He saw it, he read it, and that was the end of that affliction. Whosoever shall say to this mountain. Now this mountain there represents anything that will not let you go. Mountain there represents any affliction of the devil. It may not be for somebody else, it may not be sickness. Maybe that he is being tormented by the enemy, by demonic spirits. Whosoever shall say, say there was repeated four times to let you know that your healing is in your mouth. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall what? Have whatsoever he said. So you must never allow that thinking to come your way. There are some people, the moment they are feeling something, they are already thinking dead. They are already thinking dead. And then they begin to speak in that direction. It is where? It is where? Uh, you remember the land? There's one land I have somewhere. What was he trying to say? <laughs> He's trying to write his will. Uh -huh. It is not yet over, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? It is not yet over. People of God, at no time should you, be, should you be thinking of death. It's not possible. Every attempt to kill Jesus didn't succeed. He killed himself by saying it is finished. So that means your life is not in anybody's hand. Is somebody hearing me now? You can't be sleeping in the night and then there is a bird shouting somewhere and then because you now become afraid. No, sir. 
When you come out, Eru Shaka Pare Toketa, you have power over them. Because God put all those things under your care. Is somebody hearing me this morning? At no time must you think of death. You can even be dreaming and they put you in the coffin. Come out alive. I shall not die. But live to declare what? The works of the Lord. By that word, you have nullified every plan of the devil. That is how powerful you are. Every plan of the enemy to kill you will not succeed. Do you know what God told me very clearly the first day morning? He said, surely they will gather. Uh, so don't think uh, they won't come. No, sir. Forces of darkness will come. Why? You are a candidate of lifting. Any man going to the top will attract opposition. You will attract envy. So don't be afraid of them. Because he said, surely they will gather. He said, but not by me. Isaiah chapter 54. It's very clear there. Isaiah chapter 54, reading from verse 14. He said, In righteousness shall thou be established. He said, Thou shalt be far from oppression. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Now tell yourself, I shall be far from oppression. I didn't hear you at all. He said, For thou shalt not fear and from terror. For it shall not what? Come near thee. He said, Behold, they shall surely gather together. He said, But not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, they shall what? Fall for thy sake. Hmm. He said, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon fashioned against you shall what? Every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, what shall happen? You shall contend. That is your weapon. This your mouth is sharper than AK-47, sir. This your mouth is sharper than an atomic bomb. I have given you a mouth which none of your enemies can resist nor can say. He didn't give you a gun. He gave you a mouth. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. People of God, I'd like you to torment every demon around you, sir. Every oppression of the devil. I don't know what it is in you now. It may be sickness. It may be an attack from the village. In your sister position. Open fire. Open your mouth now. And begin to condemn every plan of the devil in your life. It shall not stand. No sir. It will not hold. Every arrow. From your family. From friends. Every attack of the devil. In your life. It will not stand. It shall not hold. In the name of Jesus. Every generational cause, spell, enchantment, divination against my destiny, it will not stand. Their plans will not hold. Lord, we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. I'd like you to understand this morning that by redemption, you have been reprogrammed into a new family. A family where they don't fall sick. A family where they don't die on time. A family where they are not stagnated. A prosperous family. A family where they have it the way they want it. That's the family you belong to. And that's why God brought you to Winner's Chapel. You were losing before, but he brought you here so that you can win. So that name, Winner's, is not for fun. It is your new identity. Others may be failing wherever you are, you know, around you, but when you arrive in the place where you are, you don't lose. Let me tell you this morning. In case there are 10,000 people somewhere and they are looking for just one person, to accomplish any assignment, to get a job, settle it in your heart that you are the one. It's not a function of qualification, sir. It's a function of your redemption. Is somebody hearing me now? Because scripture has said the last shall be what? The first. By redemption. So in this family, we don't fall sick. In this family, we live long. In this family, we succeed. 
in everything we do, that is who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is what? He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Failure, sickness, disease, stagnation, frustration. And behold, everything has become new. When you live in this realm, generational causes cannot be part of you, sir. It's not possible. It cannot have dominion over you. Numbers 23 and verse 23. Numbers 23 and verse 23. For surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. So you cannot be under any sickness. That's why God is committed to your well-being and to my well-being. Praise the name of the Lord. On this covenant family day, God is going to rescue every family from the pit of hell. Every generational cause is going to deliver everyone here this morning. What do you do to secure the rescue of our families? What do we do to rescue our family from every attack of the enemy? Number one, we should plead for mercy for our various families. For the breaking of generational curses associated with serving other gods. We should plead for mercy for our various families families, for the breaking of every generational cause. Some people, the kind of challenges they are going through now is traceable to the things their parents did in time past. Some of them were idol worshippers. Some of them, before we even came, they have already sold our destiny to the devil. So that's why they say, as you are my firstborn, okay, you are going to be a herbalist all the days of your life. Can you imagine? Just when you were born, they have already initiated you. So anytime you want to do something good, you just be seeing negative things because there are some spirit associated with that operation that has been monitoring you. But this morning, there's going to be a disconnection. In Psalm 16 verse 4, the Bible says, Their sorrow shall multiply their hasting after other gods. So when we are serving other God, we come under the affliction of God. God is a jealous God. You can't serve God and other things at the same time. No. If you have chosen to serve God, then you must be far from every form of evil. You must be far from every form of all this uh, spiritual drinking water somewhere. You are going to one mountain and somebody is leading you. No, sir. Somebody is saying, no, no, but it's still church. No. You must determine where you should be. The scripture said, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the court of our God. If you are here in this church, you are still going to another church, you go to another one in the evening, in the night you go to another one, you are running after other gods. You are not planted in one place. Any plant that is planted here, if you uproot it and put it in another place, it will die before it will germinate. If you uproot it again, put it in another place, it will die before it will germinate. So it's the same way. Going here and there takes you nowhere. Stay in one place. Some people, they come to church, carry Bible, and then when they get back home, they carry some talisman and begin to do some other incantations again. It's not, it won't work, sir. It will never work. You have simply registered yourself as a man to be punished, tormented. Stay in one place. Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Please make your decision today. Number two, how do we rescue our family from every attack of the enemy? We should enter into a covenant to serve God as individuals and as a family. We should enter into a covenant. Second Chronicles chapter 15, reading from verse 12 to 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15, reading from verse 12 to 15. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. That whosoever will not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swore unto the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting, and with trumpet, and with cornet. And all Judah rejoiced at their oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire, and it was found of them. And the Lord, what? Gave them rest round about. Gave them rest round about. 
I see God doing the same thing for you today. Yeah. Hear me this morning. Serving God has no side effect. It has all the blessings attached to it. All. 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 Now, what we are saying is not that you won't have challenges, but each time there is a challenge, God shows up, sir. At no time are you stranded. At no time. Since I became born again tonight, I have not been stranded. I have not come to a situation where I am completely overwhelmed by the situation that comes my way. It has not happened once. Please, I'd like you to understand that your greatest asset is God. When God is with you, nothing can be against you, sir. You can't be sick. You can't be tormented. You can't be molested by the devil. And that's why we keep rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. We keep celebrating the source of our strength. And as long as you keep doing that, God will make sure. You see, if God knows that every morning this young man will be praising me, he will make sure he is never sick. Because he is sure that your praise will, or if any other person changes his mind, this man's praise is constant every morning. He will ensure that this man will never be sick. He will make sure that this man is never stagnated. That is how it works. I'd like you to sign in for God this morning. And by so doing, every affliction associated with family causes, delay in all kinds of spheres of life, will no longer be identified with you in the name of Jesus. This is the reason why for some instance, some family, you have people who are not married. It's not because they are not beautiful, no. The enemy is sitting over them. There are some, they get, you know, finish school, they don't get a job. There are those they get job, but they don't even see anything around them. No progress. They just stay on one spot. All year through. But this morning, every form of generational curse, every form of affliction of the devil will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. By this communion this morning, whatever tree that God has not planted in you that is growing in you, they will be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Every form of confusion, every form of affliction, every form of torment by the devil, you are disconnecting from them today in the name of Jesus. And that's why very surely we are going to be rising up on our feet. We are going to be praying. We are going to be using the word of God to uproot everything that God has not ordained for us. Before we do that, you are here this morning and you are not born again. We would like to pray for you. Today is your day. Hear me this morning. You are not here by accident. You are not here by coincidence. God brought you here this morning in order to rescue you from the affliction of the devil. Remember we said, if a man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and everything has become new. In John 1, 12, he said, as many that have received him, he gave them power to become. So as you are giving your life to Christ this morning, power is being released in your direction in the name of Jesus. You are here, you are not born again, I'd like to pray for you. Wherever you are, may I request that you please rise up on your feet. We'd like to pray for you this morning before you leave. You know you are not born again. You know you don't have a personal walk with Christ. You know you have gone your own way, but you want to return. You know things are not working for you the way they ought to work and you desire them to walk, I'd like you to rise up on your feet this morning. Jesus has brought you, and by reason of your appearance in this church today, he's going to give you a new beginning. Wherever you are, please may I request that you rise up on your feet. And in case you have done that, please quickly come very quickly this morning to the altar here. I'd like to pray with you. Are we clapping for the Lord Jesus? Make it louder. You are here. You want to surrender your life to Jesus? Kindly rise up on your feet. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. Wherever you are, quickly rise up. Quickly rise up. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ this morning. He is your source. Wherever you are, quickly rise up. Quickly rise up. Quickly rise up. He's going to give you a new beginning. A new beginning. A new beginning. And everything will begin to work in your life from today. Quickly come out. You want to join my sister in front here? Quickly do so before we all rise up. To pray. Every other person may I request that please rise up on our feet this morning and you know that issue that must not return home with you. I'd like you to take the word of God and begin to uproot that mountain whatever represents an evil report around you. I'd like you to take the word of God this morning and begin to address that situation 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, every pain around me, let it disappear as I partake of this flesh and blood this morning. Every pain, every pain, every pain, every pain, waist pain, body pain, eye pain, ear pain. Every form of confusion around my life comes to an end this morning. Whatever represents an obstacle in my business, let it dissolve. Whatever car, whatever it is that you have not planted, causing discomfort in that family, Lord God Almighty, let it be rolled away this morning. Every crisis in every home, Lord God Almighty, terminate them. Whatever it is that is causing you confusion in your academics, in your career, Lord God Almighty, as I partake of this communion, let it dissolve. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've come to Mount Zion this morning, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Lord God Almighty, your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. I've come for deliverance this morning. Every torment of the devil in my dream, every affliction I'm going through in my business, every stagnation, Lord, let it be dissolved this morning. Whatever is responsible for delay in getting married, delay in securing a job, delay in promotion, Lord, this morning let it dissolve. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've come to this liberation unction this morning, Lord. Lord Almighty, visit me this morning. Let every affliction give way. Whatever you have not planted in my body that has defied medical solution, I've come to you this morning. The physician, I've come to you this morning. You want to say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Father, give me rest this morning from this affliction. Give me rest this morning from this torment. Give me rest this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I partake of the communion, the flesh and the blood, every appointment I have with death, let it be cancelled. Whatever that the enemy is using to torment me, the spirit of fear, Lord, I overcome in this morning by the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the blood. As I partake of the flesh and the blood, let an end come to every confusion. Let an end come to every affliction. Let an end come to every form of stagnation in my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand on behalf of my entire family right now. As I partake of this blood, Lord, let your mercy prevail over them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand, O oh Lord, in the gap for my brother, for my sister that is afflicted by the devil. Lord God Almighty, as this flesh and blood is taken this morning, let an end come to every of that oppression in this life. Lord, we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. One prayer that God will never deny us is the prayer of mercy. That was the prayer blind Bartimaeus played. He said, Jesus Christ, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And God said, I will have mercy 
on whoever I will have mercy. I'd like you to pray that prayer this morning. Lord, let your mercy prevail over my life. Mercy. Let your mercy prevail over judgment. I know I've taken a wrong step. I know I've done that which is not pleasing to you. Lord, overlook this morning. Overlook. Overlook. Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail over judgment. I stand on behalf of my entire family right now. Lord, let your mercy prevail over them. They have gone astray, serving other gods. But by this presence this morning, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Whatever it is that they have done that is against the covenant, Lord, let your mercy prevail this morning. Let your mercy prevail over judgment. Give them a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ. Give me a new beginning this morning as I partake of this flesh and blood. Let your mercy prevail, Lord. To the glory and to the praise of your name, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.